The Raleigh Cigarette Program from Hollywood, starring Red Skelton, with Oz and Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard, and yours truly, Truman Bradley. Smokers, any cigarette can claim superiority. But we give you proof. Proof of Raleigh's outstandingly high quality that you can plainly see for yourself. Compare the open ends of a pack of Raleigh cigarettes with any other brand. You'll see instantly that the tobaccos in Raleigh's are unmistakably more golden in color. And that speaks quality in the tobacco business. Any expert will tell you the more golden tobaccos are choicer, more expensive. Yes, smokers, you can make this test yourself. You can prove to yourself that Raleigh's do give you the better tobaccos. And Raleigh's give you valuable coupons, too, redeemable for premiums, war stamps, or cash. Truly, Raleigh's offer you more than any other cigarette. Next time, why not try Raleigh's? And now we bring you the star of our Raleigh cigarette show, Red Skelton. Thank you. Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Red, what's cooking? I don't know, but I'll bet it didn't come in cans. Uh, what have you been doing all week? Well, you know, you're now looking at Victory Garden Skelton. Tell me, how much Victory Garden have you got? One acre. It's my back. Well... Well, the secret to a successful victory garden is not to plant more than you can care for. Things really grow fast out here in California, don't they, Ray? Yeah, I'll say, you don't even have to plant anything. You just hold the seed in your hand, the ground comes up and snaps at it. <laughs> no kidding, I planted some beans last summer, uh, last week, <laughs> and this morning they're halfway to Boston. <laughs> Red, tell me, how about tomatoes? No, I'm going home early tonight. <laughs> No, no, I, I'm talking about your victory garden. Oh, say, have you got a victory garden, Truman? Yes, sir, indeed I have. Everyone should have a victory garden, really? especially this year, because one-fourth of our total food production in 1943 will be needed for our armed forces and to help our allies. Oh. Hi, Hiya, Red. Hi, Harriet. Oh, boy, am I tired. I've been working my garden. You have? Yeah, Ozzie was helping me. I dug up the garden and raked the soil and dug the holes and planted the seeds. Wait a minute. What did Ozzie do? Oh, he prayed for rain. <laughs> Not only have I got vegetables, but you should see the fruit I'm getting, too. Yeah, me, too. Uh... <laughs> you know, in my yard, I've got lemons, tangerines, and kumquats. What's a kumquat, Ray? Well, in California, that's just another name for a Florida orange. <laughs> Hiya, folks. Hello, Ozzy. Harriet was telling me about your victory garden. Yeah, it's fun to have your own garden. Yeah. And besides, victory gardens reduce the demand of commercial food supplies, and that leaves more for everyone. Now, how's your garden doing? Well, everything was all right until last week when the rains came. The rains came. Well, what happened? Did your garden wash away? Oh, no. But I just opened the back door and waited for the right vegetable to flow past. <laughs> Say, I thought it never rained in California, Red. Well, all I know is I went to the door and a fella handed me a letter from the Chamber of Commerce. And what did it say? It says, Dear Mr. Skelton, regardless of all that stuff you see running down the gutter, it does not rain in California. <laughs> And then what happened? Oh, he got back in his boat and paddled away. <laughs> well, you know, raising your own vegetables will help you during this point rationing. Yeah, what do you mean, Harriet? Well, we're still using the stuff we grew last year. Oh. I put it up in bottles last summer. You know, I put my stuff next to my uncle's bottled goods in the wine cellar. What happened? Well, did you ever open up a can of cherries and have them throw your arms, their arms around you and say, What you doing, big boy? <laughs> Trouble with gophers, Red. No, they're all right if you cook them long enough. <laughs> no, I mean if the gophers have been eating your vegetables. Yeah, I'll say they haven't. Boy, are they fresh. One gopher grabbed my reddish and he looked up at me and he says, Well, don't stand there, stupid. Pass the salt. <laughs> Borrows all my newest shirts 
and wears my sharpest ties. He even lends my car out to a dozen other guys. If I should try to get a ride, I get the well-known thumb from my old chum. I try to get a night of rest, I even lock the door. But he brings in a party that swings out till three or four. Who winds up sleeping in my bed while I sleep on the floor? My old chum. We make a blind date with a couple of girls to dine at some fancy priced grill. I always wind up with the homely one, and of course I'm the guy who pays the bill. I thought I'd found the one girl who could never be surpassed. I even got to thinking, this is real romance at last. Then I found she'd run away with just another bum. My old chum. She wears my finest evening gowns, gets runners in my holes. And uses my pet powder puff to dull her shiny nose. My mail is open by mistake, but she knows who it's from. She's my old chum. She broadcasts all my secrets, but to everyone in town. And splashes in my fine perfume. It really gets me down. She beats me to the kitchen, and she leaves me not a crumb. That's my old chum. She tells me she simply adores my new hat. She says, "My dear, it's too, too divine." Then says to all my friends, "Is she kidding with that?" <laughs> But then, after all, what can you expect for a dollar forty-nine? While glancing through this morning's pictures on the social page, I saw the Duke of、uh, something or other, the newest social rage, and standing right beside the Duke, but standing well upstage, was my old child. By Harriet Nosey and dedicated to the 364th Infantry. Well, say, Red, outside of playing army camps in the desert and working in your victory garden, what else、uh, did you do last week? Well, I started my spring cleaning. I took down my woolen drapes and I washed them in boiling water. Now, Red, hot water shrinks wool and makes the colors run. Yeah, you know anybody wants to buy a piece of plaid Kleenex? <laughs> Say, aren't you starting your spring cleaning just a little too early? Oh,、no, everybody's cleaning house now. You take Clem, the fellow from the country. He started his, cleaning up his farm last week, and he had quite a job too. He was walking. <laughs> I the blue do 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 do. Yes, sir. Eyes are blue and nothing between them but a blank expression. Boy, do I hate spring cleaning. I wish Daisy June was here. I'd pretend I was sick and make her do the work for me. <laughs> oh, don't laugh. I bet some of you guys pull the same trick. <laughs> Oh, I bet that's another one of those OPA men working his way through college. <laughs> I'll just take this baseball bat, and if he puts his foot through the door, I'll let him hit it. <clears throat> I don't want any. Hello, Cam. Will D. <laughs> <laughs> Well,、uh, I bought the tickets. Sure. <laughs> Boy, there's nothing I like better than free dancing. Well, Clem, ain't you gonna invite me in? Yeah, I'm kind of busy cleaning my house. You well, know. you ain't doing a very good job. Look, I can write my name in the dust on this plow in the hall. <laughs> you can? Gee, education's a wonderful thing, ain't it? <laughs> well, what you look at it? Was she expecting me to help you? Now she ought to know better than that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. Hey, which one of these bottles is floor polish? Well, this、you? one's floor polish, and the other one's hair restorer. Okay. <laughs> 
Now, why did you break that good bottle of hair restorer? Well, I don't want to make the same mistake I made last year. I used the hair restorer for floor polish. What happened? Every time I swept the floor, I had to part it in the middle. <laughs> well, I'll just sit here and finish my knitting until you get through. What you making? Well, that's a surprise. I'm a making your birthday present. What is it? It's a secret. Oh, what is it? I won't tell me. Claim you're a sap. Yeah, I'm a jerk, too. Now, how can you be a jerk and a sap, too? I lead a double life. <laughs> hey, come on, Daisy June. Tell me, what you making? Hmm? Well, I'm a knitting you some underwear, Claim. You want to see them? Underwear for me? Let's see them. Okay, there. Gee, zoot snuggies. <laughs> look better if you took that wash tub off and down the mantel. Well, okay, I'll climb up there and get it off and down. Well, throw it down, Clem. Be careful you don't fall. <clears throat> Suppose you let go of it, wasn't it? <laughs> Are you hurt? No, I always wrap my ears around my head like a turban. <laughs> hey, get hold of the dude that's coming up the house. He sure looks funny, don't he? Look at this. No toes. He's a wearing shoes. Shoes? Oh, Clem, his toes are inside them things. What's the matter? Is he ashamed of them? <laughs> howdy. Now, howdy, I'm selling soap. What's it? Well, that's that stuff you wash with. You know, it takes the dirt off. No kidding. Boy, what they won't think of next. <laughs> uh, won't you come in? Well, thanks. Well, uh... You just back from feeding the pigs, ain't you? Yeah, how'd you know? Never mind, I'll just open the window. <laughs> now, this here bath soap smells as sweet as a rose. Uh, would you like to take a bath with some? Take a bath? Are you kidding? This ain't April. <laughs> Clem, stop talking like that. Why don't you go take a bath? Just figure it's part of your spring cleaning. Okay, give me this soap. It won't burn, will it? Oh, brother, not that soap. It's made of coconut oils and vegetables. Well, I'll just sip it. I'll just go in here into the bathroom and try it out. I'll get off these clothes. My hat, my overcoat, my vest, my coat, my vest, my coat. Well, Daisy June, you remember that windbreaker I lost last winter? Yes? I just found it. <laughs> Now for a shower. Boy, there's nothing like a good cold shower. Oh, I feel like a new man. <laughs> well, Clem, how do you like that soap? Tastes pretty good. Now, wait a minute. You ain't eating that, are you? You said it was made out of vegetables, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I ain't letting no good food go down no drain pipe in times like this, brother. <laughs> Sure, I'm all right. Didn't hurt me. <clears throat> but now I know what they mean when they sing, I'm forever blowing bubbles. Speaking of spring cleaning, did you hear what happened to Deadeye out in Poison Gulch last week? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I have said yes to program it in right there. <laughs> so what happened? <laughs> well... <laughs> says here, they were all sitting around in the Red Devil Saloon when someone decided they should clean up the town. Yeah. Hey, piano player, stop that, will you? Now stop that. Oh, come on, piano player, stop! <laughs> all right, brother, you asked for it. <laughs> How do you like that? I had to shoot the piano, too. <laughs> Okay, now let's get back to this card game. Uh, <clears throat> what are you holding there, Clem? Uh, Slim? <laughs> who? Slim, what are you uh, got? Six aces. What have you got? Six aces. Well, what do you know? It's a tie. <laughs> now, wait a minute. What's that card up your sleeve? Up my sleeve? Yeah. Well, lucky for me, another ace. I win. <laughs> Sweetie pie today. Well, monotonous Maggie. How you been? Swell. I've been home making myself pretty for you. Yeah. Remember them circles I used to have under my eyes? Yeah. Well, look now. Great ball of fire triangle. 
Well, ain't you gonna kiss me? No, I'm busy cheating at cards. <clears throat> Besides, I kissed you last night, didn't I? Yeah, but look, my lips are all pulled out straight again now. <laughs> Don't you make love to me like Charles Boyer? You want uh, me to make love like Charles Boyer, huh? Okay. Come with me to the Caspar. Mustel. Come with me to the Caspar. Come with me. Uh, you thought I should come with you to the Caspar? Yeah. I wish you'd stop crying, gal. You're putting my Raleigh cigarette out. <laughs> of course I love you, Mag. Why, I'm crazy about your little scrub nose. No, did I? You mean snub. I got a snub nose. Okay, but if I was you, I'd scrub my snub. <laughs> you know, gal, every time I look at you... Yes? I wish I hadn't. <laughs> every time I look at you, goose pimples go up and down my backbone. Goose pimples, huh? Well, grab them. These are meatless days, you know. <laughs> Just like Hetty Lamar, we're both women, aren't we? Yeah. Beer and champagne both come in bottles, too. <laughs> well, get a load of the blimp that just uh, floated in. <laughs> Boy, would Lieutenant Bill like to drop a blockbuster like you? <laughs> well, uh, what you doing, stranger? Howdy, stranger. My name's Beanpole. Beanpole? <laughs> Well, you're the fattest bean pole I ever saw. Yep, the beans never grew out of me. <laughs> hey, who are you? I'm Deadeye, the toughest cowboy in the West. I stand eight feet two in my stocking feet. How tall are you with shoes on? Who's got shoes nowadays? <laughs> you look kind of run down to me. Listen to the man, will you? Why, you know them big construction companies that build them big roads through the hot desert? Yes. You know them great big boulders have to be broken in a little bitty pieces? Yes. You know all that tar and asphalt has to be stamped and pounded till it's flat? Yes. I paint the white lines down the middle of the road. <laughs> well, my, my, who's this little creature I see here? <laughs> She does that every time she wants a lump of sugar. <laughs> I'd like to know you better, little lady. Pull up my knee and sit down. Okay. Where is it? <laughs> Say, what brings you to Poison Gulch? Dead I I'm here to clean up this place. Now, wait a minute. That's my job. Oh, Dead I what did you ever do to clean up this town? Well, I've done a lot. You know that dirty old bank with all that filthy money with them germs on it? Yeah. Cleaned it out last night. <laughs> It's about time somebody cleaned out this town. By golly, you're right. We'll get together and throw out every dirty crook and every dirty politician that lives here. Are you with me? Yeah. <laughs> here, put me down. Now, listen, there's dirtier crooks in this town besides me. Hey, I got to think fast, Maggie. I wonder what Gene Audrey would do in a spot like this. He'd throw away his guns, roll up his sleeves, and give them the worst licking of their lives. Yeah. I wonder what baby Sandy would do in the same spot. <laughs>
Gladstone knows all about cleanups. He's out in the backyard washing his face in the in the basin. This is the way you wash your face, wash your face, wash your face. This is the way. Why, hello there, Newt. What are you washing your face in the backyard for? Oh, I have to. You see, my wife's taking a bath standing up. A uh, bath standing up? Why doesn't she sit down? Well, she can't. You see, I've got a fleet of toy battle boats in the tub. <laughs> and yesterday she sat on the submarine. Oh. <laughs> submarine, huh? Yeah. Well, whether it's some soldier, some sailor, or submarine, they all agree on Raleigh's. Because smokers know that Endo Raleigh's goes everything to make them the very best cigarette you can buy. The tobaccos are the very finest quality, and you can prove that for yourself. No! Oh, oh. uh, what's the matter? Don't oh. you believe me? Oh, sure. I got some soap in my eyes. I can't stay. Well, get that soap out of your eyes, Newt, because I want you to see at a glance the tobaccos in Raleigh's are more golden in color. Any expert will tell you these more golden tobaccos are choicer, more expensive. Yes, you get better tobaccos in Raleigh's. And you get a better blend of tobaccos, too. Well, I got some all ready to dry off. Now, hand me the towel, will you? Sure, here you are. Oh, boy, does that feel good. Pardon me while I do it behind my ears. Go right ahead, because ears good news for you. Raleigh's exclusive blend gives you a richer taste and flavor. A smooth, mellow mildness that no other cigarette can quite match. And no other cigarette can match Raleigh's for extra values Why either. am I clean? Nobody will ever recognize me if I keep on. Oh, yes. Raleigh's give you valuable premium coupons. Remember, <laughs> redeemable as well for war stamps and cash. Now, to get the most from the cigarettes you smoke, always ask for Raleigh's. Raleigh cigarettes. <laughs> Then we have a lady and her little boy. Cleaning house is really something for her, especially with Junior helping. So, Harriet, you be my mother, and I'll be the mean little kid. Junior, listen, Mother's busy cleaning the attic, and I want you to be good today. Promise me, will you? Well, I've been good. This morning I could have bitten that little boy next door, but I used me willpower, and I didn't do it. What? That's wonderful, Junior. Yeah, but if he ever puts down that baseball bat, look out. <laughs> out there by the clock. Junior. I will go see. I will see what time it is. Well, Junior? Well, the widow hand is on four and the big hand is on the widow hand. Well, that ought to be easy. What time do you think it is? Time I stop putting glue on the widow hand. <laughs> oh, look, there's me basketball. I think I will play some ping pong. Ping pong with a basketball? Sure, what? <laughs> see? Ping pong. <laughs> Young man, you can pay for that window out of your allowance each week. Well, now, that's mighty neighborly of you. <laughs> Look at this place. Now, I ought to paddle you a good one. Oh, bit. don't do that, Mummy, because after all, you're the pretty Mummy. You're so nice and so young, and you get prettier every day, you do. Well, that's a nice compliment, Junior. Yeah. All right, run along. Boy, that P.T. Barnum sure knew what he was talking about, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody at the door, we had got company. Every day we got company. Is that you, Pop? No, I'm the junk man. Oh. Have you got any old newspapers or magazines or rags or old iron or maybe old bottles? Well, do you have any old bags? Only under me widow eye. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Junk Man. Junior, you go into the next room. No, you let me stay or I will hit myself on the head with this book. Junior, stop hitting yourself with that book. Do you want to lose my place? Uh, <laughs> now get into the other room. Now go you on. let me stay or I will tell. You'll tell what? You'll help me, I will blab everything. <laughs> What? I will tell everybody used to be an Indian princess with a medicine show. Oh, Junior, that's not true. Oh, no. Hey, Pocahontas, here comes the crowd. Quick, Doc, hand me me mercure, comb and me fetish. Junior! <laughs> that does it. Oh, oh you hit me, you hit me. You knocked all me baby teeth out. You knocked all me baby teeth out. Junior, you don't have any baby teeth anymore. I know, you knock them all out. <laughs> Lady, I'm still here. Do you have any junk? Oh, why, yes. You really came just in time. I'm cleaning out the attic. Well, that's fine. I'll come right up and I'll help you bring the stuff down. Oh, that's, that's a good neighbor. idea. I'll lead the way. Sure. It's rather dark up there. Oh, I don't mind. <laughs> you see what happens, fellas, while you was working? <laughs> Junior, you're fishing for a whipping. And something tells me I'm using the right bait, too, boy. <laughs> Oh, there he oh, is. That cat. Junior, put the cat outside. Okay, come on, cat, come on. Here, don't you scratch me. Come here. I'll rub your fur the wrong way for that, boy. Whoa! Whoa! 
How do you like that? He can spit right through his hide. <laughs> well, careful, cat. You get off that table before you knock that little lamp over. Come on. Oh. Junior? That what did cat, you break? No. That cat, he... Oh, no, you don't. I'm getting tired of you breaking things and blaming it on the cat. <laughs> now you're going to get it. Oh, 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 oh. Pull me back, your neck. Give me back. Well, I guess I cried wolf once too often. <laughs> cat, you is cook. Come in, sit down, will you? I want to have a man-to-man talk to you. A man-to-cat talk, rather. We are through. You've outlived your usefulness with me. I used to depend on you, but I don't know. You just, just you ain't no good no more. I'm sorry. I'll keep you on the feeding list, but from now on, you got to catch your own mice. <laughs> Oh, I'll get it. Now's my chance to get to that junk man up in the attic. Oh, boy. Hey, look at all this stuff in this trunk over here. Yeah, I wonder what it is. No, that's me mummy's wedding outfit. Oh, sure enough. Yeah. Dried flowers, uh, bridal veil, handcuffs, bear trap, and shotgun. <laughs> Wait a minute. I wonder what that's doing in there. I don't know. I asked me mummy once, and she just closed her trunk and says, Oh, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Here's something I really want. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We couldn't sell that. Oh, I'll give you a nickel for it. No, I... Sure, sure. Oh, boy, am I lucky. Why, you can't get stuff like this anymore. Well, so long, little Goodbye, goodbye. Hurry, hurry. Hurry, hurry. What happened to the junk man, Junior? He gave me a nickel and went away. What did you sell him? Just a case of that old canned goods. Congratulations to the generous Americans who have made it possible for our boys far away from the comforts of home in Africa and Guadalcanal to have a large quantity of our cigarettes, which bear the union label, donated to them free by the Carpenters District Council of Washington, D.C. Also congratulations to the Teamsters Local Number 99 of Miles City, Montana, for their generous gift of our cigarettes to the sailors patrolling the seas. And remember, we'll all be back again next Tuesday at the same time. Red Skelton, Ozzie Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard, and yours truly, Truman Bradley. Meanwhile, listen to the Tommy Dorsey Show tomorrow night over most of these same stations. Until next Tuesday, then. This is Red Skelton saying goodbye now and thanks for listening and help the war effort plant a victory garden. Red Skelton is heard on this program through the courtesy of the Metro Golden Mayor Studios. This program has been broadcast to the Armed Forces Overseas. Coming in from a high speed trial run, a new Navy boat edges gracefully up to a mooring. Great work, Skipper. How'd she handle? Well, I jumped out. Uh, say, you really planned the ship there, mister. Handled beautifully. Made the trip so fast, I'm still rocking a bit. Well, then, hey. try my simmer-down prescription, a pipe load of Sir Walter Raleigh. Why, thanks. I smoke Raleigh myself. Sort of my first mate, you might say. I find it's just the thing to help me relax. Sure does. When I'm working over the drawing board, a couple of puffs of Raleigh just seem to sort of take the pressure off. Guess a lot of fellas feel the same way. Right you are, Skipper. Men everywhere who are doing things are Sir Walter Raleigh smokers. They enjoy that smooth, mellow, nut-like flavor. Raleigh's bite-free richness. So take this tip, all you pipe smokers. Tonight, try Raleigh, the quality pipe tobacco of America. Sir Walter Raleigh. This program has come to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.